Hello everyone and welcome! In today's video, I'm going to be making some wheels. Well, 3D printing some RC wheels for my 125th scale 2010 Shelby GT500 to be exact. This is a car I built and showcased on the channel a while back. It features a fully 3D printed Make It RC FFR SU1 chassis and this highly detailed Mustang body from a Ravel model kit. If you'd like to see me building this car, check out the playlist linked below in the description. This was an awesome build that I highly recommend checking out. I've made videos showcasing every step of the build process. The car turned out looking sick, but recently I thought it could use a new pair of shoes. Not that there's anything wrong with what it's got now, but any excuse to spend a few evenings doing a little design work and 3D printing sounds good to me. Now the wheels that this car is riding on now were designed to be 3D printed using an FDM or FFF 3D printer. You know, the ones that extrude hot plastic that lays down layer after layer. This is what I think most people have in mind when they think of a 3D printer. These are the most obtainable for most hobbyists, with entry-level FDM printers being available for around 200 to 300 US dollars. That was the reason for going with this design. I wanted to create something that you, the viewers at home, would be able to easily print yourself while still looking good. I think I accomplished that well, but now I want to have a little more fun and design a couple wheels with more detail and not limit myself to creating something that's as easy to print as possible. I'll be using an SLA 3D printer to make these wheels. Rather than melting plastic, an SLA printer uses a laser to cure liquid resin. The final part will have a lot more detail and a smoother surface. For smaller detailed parts like this, the SLA printer is king, but print time will be longer and generally both the printer and resin is more expensive. I'll be printing my wheels on a Formlabs Form 3 printer. It produces great parts, but with a base price of around three and a half grand, it's far outside of most casual hobbyists' budgets. Now, entry-level SLA printers can be had for as little as less than 200 US dollars. Though keep in mind, just as you wouldn't expect a cheap used 2002 Toyota Camry to have comparable lap times to that of a new Lamborghini Huracan, you can't really expect a $200 printer to match the quality and features of a printer costing over three grand. However, with that said, just as in any hobby, whether it be RC cars, regular cars, guitars, looking at stars, with 3D printing, it's really worth your time and money to do some research. There are tons of printers available for all different budgets, and there's also so many websites and YouTube channels doing reviews and comparisons. Really, spend some time and find out what printer will work best for you. To go back to our car analogy, you might want to find something that's less expensive and more practical than a Huracan, but faster, newer, and better looking than the Camry. Maybe something like, I don't know, a 2010 Ford Shelby GT500? I will be posting these STL files onto Patreon for anyone wanting to spice up the ride along with me. If you need a different size, send us a message. We may be able to accommodate your request. Don't have a printer? No problem. We can custom print these for you. Just contact us on our website linked below or check out our Shapeway store where the fine folks at Shapeways can print these in all kinds of different materials. Anyways, we've got our plan, talked a little info about 3D printers, so I think it's now time we move on to making some wheels. Alright, so this is the fun part. I wanted to start out by getting some inspiration. I ended up looking at wheels on carid.com and they have this cool car visualizer thing that was pretty fun to mess around on. Some wheels look pretty sick, others look... interesting. It's kind of fun since it's sort of like choosing wheels for your full-size car. There's just so many options, and with the power of CAD and 3D printing, we can make something similar to go on a tiny RC car. After some messing around, as well as asking you all for some ideas, I decided on the Vertini RFS 1.7 and the Forge Star M14. I'll only be using these wheels for reference and inspiration. I'm not going to try to make an exact millimeter by millimeter replica. There would be way more time involved doing that, and there's a few things I want to tweak to make it more of my own. So with this reference material gathered, it's time to design. I designed these wheels using Autodesk Fusion 360, which is a free for hobbyist option that I highly recommend, though other CAD options certainly exist. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail talking about the design or how to design wheels as there's already tons of videos out there, including a few that I've made that go into a lot more detail. 
If you're a complete novice and want to learn to use Fusion 360, there's tons of great videos and channels out there that will start from the absolute basics, and you'll be better off starting from there rather than watching my videos where I usually very quickly cover the design process. Really wheels are pretty simple to make since once you make one slice of the pie, you can just duplicate it to make the rest. I do really enjoy designing wheels, they're just such a cool part of the car that can really change the overall appearance. It's fun messing around with different designs. There are a few things that I keep in mind, mainly that I don't want to make any sections too thin, which may result in it breaking during use. Also I want to avoid any parts that would be difficult to print, such as adding a valve stem. As cool as a valve stem would be to include, anything more than a tiny nub would probably be very hard to print, and it probably wouldn't last long. I'm making these wheels have the exact same dimensions as the ones I designed previously. This includes the outer diameter, width, backspacing, etc. This is just to make sure it will fit the car exactly like the wheels I have on currently. After many, many minutes of clicking and button pressing, the wheel designs were complete and ready to be printed. The wheels printed overnight, and after 14 hours of eager anticipation, we had our result. Now calm down there editor, we have got the wheels and they look nice. The detail, the print quality, it's just all there. I've got a complete set of both styles, both the five spoke and the more than five spoke. I've got some drilled rotors as well, those are going to look cool. The next step is going to be to trim off all the supports. You can see all of this support structure that they have while it's being printed. It's oriented like this. Uh, so what I need to do is come in and carefully remove all of those supports. After that, I'm going to do some sanding as well. The surface that it leaves behind is going to be a little bit rough. So we're going to do that. After I clean them up, uh, they should be ready for paint. So using side cutters and a hobby knife, I carefully removed all of the supports. The location and diameter of the supports is something that you decide before printing. It's a balance of not having the part come loose as it's being printed upside down, but also not being too big of a pain to remove all of those supports. I aim more on the side of caution and used more supports for these parts. Nothing a little trimming and sandpaper can't deal with. I did make sure to wash the parts after sanding and it wasn't long before I was ready to paint. So to save time, I'm gonna be hand painting these using acrylic paint, which dries pretty quick. We've got some Model Masters bronze, or brass, uh, some Tamiya Chrome silver and black. That's what I'm going to use to paint these up. Should look pretty cool. All right, little change of plans. Uh, it took quite a few coats to kind of build that paint up enough to where there was no black showing through and it's a little bit uneven. So what I'm gonna do, is so I'm gonna spray the rotors and spray the wheels with some Duplicolor spray paint. Uh, it dries pretty quick. Um, and then I'll come back with some enamel. I'm gonna let this dry and paint that rim with some enamel silver, kind of a little bit thicker. Won't take as many coats. So that's the revised plan, let's go do it. So as I said, the hand painting with acrylics was a little tedious with the paint being thin and I was covering black with a lighter color. If I really wanted the best results, I'd break out the airbrush and use that to paint the wheels, maybe also lay down a light coat of primer, but being late, I just used a rattle can and brush. You'll soon see that although not the best paint job possible, they turned out pretty nice. So this is the enamel paint I'm going to be using. It's actually flat steel. I don't know if I have silver, but I'm going to try it out. It should look pretty cool. But like I said, I think the enamel paint, it's going to be a little bit thicker. So I won't have to do so many coats like I do with the acrylic paint. So we're going to see how that looks. 
I thought I'd finish off the five spoke wheels by applying a glossy clear coat. After letting the wheels dry, we have our result. These wheels turned out looking awesome. Again, the hand-painted wheels leave a little to be desired, but overall, I really like the color choice and the design. I used super glue to secure the brake rotors to the back of each wheel for a little extra detail. After that, I put on some Make It RC 18x25x10 silicone tires for a lower profile look. All that's left to do now is to mount them onto the car and see how it looks. Starting with the more than five spoke wheels, these just look sick in my opinion. I love the silver paint, not too chromey but also not too flat. The five spokes look just as cool. I think the brass paint with the blue car matches nicely. But let me know what you all think and what wheels you would choose below in the comments. For me, it's a tough choice. I really like both sets. As I said before, if you'd like to get a set of these wheels, the links are below. I had a lot of fun designing, printing, and painting these wheels, and I hope you enjoyed watching. And it looks like I'm not the only one doing some awesome RC building, as evidenced by these posts from the Make It RC Facebook group. The group is open to all RC model car and 3D printing enthusiasts, so please feel free to join and show off what you've built or what you're currently working on. You might just find your project showcased in a future Make It RC video. Thanks everyone for sharing, and I'm looking forward to seeing what awesome photos and projects you all showcase next. That's going to be all for this video. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you next time.